Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. <laughs> said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. <clears throat> Let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and that I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. I ask each of you in the presence of God, who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort your heart by his holy absolution and strengthen you by his sacraments that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. <clears throat> A great multitude which no one could number stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne 
Lord be with you. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded in Isaiah chapter 25. It begins at verse 6. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the leaves. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So far the word of God. <clears throat> Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers. Praise The lesson is recorded in Revelation chapter 7. It begins at verse 2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So far the word of God. Alleluia. Behold, I am coming quickly. Amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. Shall we begin again? John, could you lead us again, please? Sure. Yeah. So we sing all, one note until Lord Jesus. In the second line. 
written in the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Uh, it also serves as our sermon text today, so we will hear it read this one time. And seeing the multitudes, he, Jesus, went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who went before you. So far, the word of God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have an end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to be singing the hymns uh, as they are noted in your bulletin. Uh, there's some discrepancy between those and the ones on the hymn board. So I'll sing 553 at this time.
let us bow our heads and pray. O almighty and everlasting God, through your only begotten and beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you will sanctify all your elect and beloved. Give us grace to follow their faith, hope, and love, that we together with all your saints may obtain eternal life. And now we ask uh, that you would bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Dear fellow redeemed, we just sang a hymn about saints. So what is a saint? An online definition of the word saint says that a saint is a person who is considered that is thought to be holy. Some people, for example, say that about another. He or she is such a saint. If someone gives the shirt off his back to others, if someone gives all they have to feed the poor, if someone lives a moral life, people might consider such a person a saint. They are people who are considered holy, are very good, such as many address the Dalai Lama. In another example, authorities in one Christian denomination consider someone who lived an exemplary life a saint. In order to do that, someone has to have been dead for five years. Then the authorities investigate how virtuous the dead was, and finally a miracle has to be attributed to the dead. Then he or she is canonized and declared a saint, such as Mother Teresa. In either case, both are looking at what the person does. They imagine that what the person does makes them a saint. That is how many, even Lutherans, have often looked at and do look at the Beatitudes. They see them as a collection of moral truths, primarily rules, to show you how to live the Christian life. If you try really hard, you can, look up, you can live up to them looked at that way, they are pure law. <clears throat> the truth of the matter, though, is that none of us can live up to them. Not the Dalai Lama, not you or me, not Mother Teresa, not your nor my deceased relatives. No one. At best, Isaiah says, our efforts are only like filthy rags. And filthy rags, they do not earn God's favor. Filthy rags are soiled to be discarded in the trash heap of hell. No, the Beatitudes are not law, but rather gospel. That was made clear at one of our Northwest pastors' conferences some time ago. It was explained that the key to understanding the Beatitudes as gospel is the word they. Blessed are they. Who are they? The they are Jesus and you who believe in him. In other words, the Beatitudes describe Jesus, what he did to earn God's favor for you, and what Jesus did for you is conveyed to you in the word. In other words, Jesus is the one who is poor in spirit, who became impoverished with the sins of the world, the one who mourns, who wept over the unbelief of his own people, the one who is meek, who humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. The one who hungered and thirsted for righteousness, who was baptized to fulfill all righteousness for you. Jesus is the one who was merciful, who showed mercy to the sick and demon-possessed. The one who is pure in heart, who is tempted in every way as we are, but without sin. The one who was the peacemaker, who through his cross made peace with God for us. The one who is persecuted, who became the target of the world's hatred because of his righteous life. Be sure Jesus is the one who fits the description of the Beatitudes. By fitting this description, Jesus wove a robe of righteousness he wove it with the threads of each of the Beatitudes, and then he draped that robe on you. He did in your baptism, sealing you as one of his. You are all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus, 
For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That means you are a saint. Not that you are considered holy, as the online definition says. No, a saint, as our catechism says, is holy. That is to say, God no longer sees your sin, even though you still are a sinner and struggle with sin in this life. God knows you struggle with sin daily. The bad that you do not want to do, you still do. And the good you, do, you want to do, that you do not do. And yet God, in his grace, sees you in Christ Jesus, clothed in Christ's righteous, holy robe. It is not your holiness, it is the holiness of another, that of Jesus. His holiness is your holiness by faith. It all goes to say that you are a part of the they in the Beatitudes. In other words, the Beatitudes depict who you are in Jesus by faith and who you are affects how you live your life. We see that, for example, as we come to the last beatitude. When we arrive at the last beatitude, there is a change. The first eight beatitudes use the word they. Blessed are they. The ninth beatitude changes. It changes from they to you and me. You are those who believe in Jesus. Me is Jesus. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. In so many words, Jesus says persecution awaits you who believe in him. In fact, Jesus says that has been the history of the church. It is what has already been experienced by the prophets. For so they persecuted the prophets who went before you. To be sure, there was Abel, who suffered martyrdom at the hands of his brother Cain. There were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were cast into the fiery furnace for confessing the faith. There was Daniel, who was thrown into the lion's den for confessing the faith. There were the apostles, all of whom suffered martyrdom, except perhaps John, for being witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. And then there were the 21 Coptic Egyptian Christians who were martyred for confessing the faith just a few years ago. We have not had to face that kind of persecution in our land. Even so, there is opposition and even hostility to the faith. The baptized may get passed over for job promotions because they believe in Jesus. The baptized may not be permitted to display articles of faith at the work site, while symbols of other religions are welcomed. The baptized is told in so many words that talking about the faith is forbidden. You no doubt have felt some of that. It is frustrating and discouraging. He calls you. So Jesus' words depicting that condition sound a bit strange. He calls you blessed when you suffer for the faith. How can that be a blessing? It is because it identifies you, the baptized into Jesus, joined to Jesus by faith as the body of Jesus, Jesus being the head. And even as the head was persecuted, it is no different for his body. About it, though, Jesus says, great will be your reward in heaven. Wait, you say, does that not sound like we do something to earn heaven? No, Jesus does not mean that your suffering for the faith is meritorious. Our forefathers put it this way. We confess that eternal life is a reward. That is to say, it is something due because of the promise, not because of merit. In other words, God promises you heaven because of Jesus. He will reward you with heaven, not because you earn it, but because he promised it to you. In Jesus. That, in fact, is how the first and eighth beatitude begin and end. They form bookends to the first eight beatitudes. The first one says, Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And the eighth one says, Blessed are they 
who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Many of the they have already entered into the kingdom of God, that part of God's kingdom where they see God face to face. They have come out of what the apostle calls the great tribulation. They have come out of this world where the faith suffers at the hands of many opposed to it, where they have had their own struggles, where they have suffered affliction of other kinds. Among them are our loved ones who have gone before us and departed in the faith. They are part of that number of the crowd dressed in white robes. They did not get there because they wove their own robes of righteousness, no, they are those whose robes were washed clean in the blood of Jesus and were clothed in his righteous robe. There they no longer struggle with sin, no longer suffer pain, no longer sorrow, no longer know death. There they have been comforted just as the beatitude promises. There Jesus has wiped away every tear from their eyes. They are the saints in heaven. They are that part of the kingdom of God that we call the church triumphant. You and I are not there yet. We are a part. We are a part of the saints that are still here, the saints on earth. Yet we too are a part of God's kingdom, that part of God's kingdom that is called the church militant. The part of the church that still struggles against its enemies, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh, that lives not by sight, but by faith. In other words, we are a part of that church that still experiences affliction, tribulation, and persecution. That includes the sorrow we have at the loss of those who have gone before us. There's that empty chair, that empty pew. There are the remembrances that bring them to mind the impulse to talk to them, though they are gone. They are gone. They are not coming back. They cannot come back to us. Eventually, though, we will go to them. In fact, the sacrament is a foretaste of that. In the sacrament, Jesus gives you his true body in the bread. He gives you his true blood in the wine. He gives you his very self, washing you of your sin, and wrapping you in his white, holy robe, even as he has done for those who have gone before you. When you then approach the altar railing, when you kneel either on your knees or in your heart, you are kneeling before Jesus. You are kneeling before Jesus who graciously comes to you hidden under the bread and wine. It is the same Jesus before whom our loved ones who have gone before us kneel in glory. No longer is he hidden from their eyes. It all goes to say that here, here at the altar, the church in heaven and on earth, here we with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, here we meet. It is here at the altar then where you stay connected to those who have gone before you. It is because Jesus is your connection to them. Come then to the Lord's altar, the place where the church in heaven and on earth meets with Jesus at the center, where Jesus wipes away your tears from your eyes, where you are given a foretaste of the day when you will see Jesus face to face. To Jesus alone be the glory forever and ever. You may rise and receive the blessing. <coughs> now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
be seated for the offering. <clears throat> Departed, and we'll sing the verses in your bulletin noted 554, 1 through 4.
scripture says in Psalm 116, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. On this All Saints Day observance, though we and families in our congregation have been impacted by the death of loved ones, we remember and give thanks to God for the faith professed by our departed loved ones. And though they have departed, they enjoy the happiness that knows no ending in the kingdom of glory. Let us remember then those who have gone before us this past year, sealed with the Spirit in the means of grace, begun in baptism and nourished in the company of his people by word and sacrament, and who now have received from God the inheritance which was theirs by faith in Jesus. We give thanks <clears throat> to God for the faith professed by Bill Gusseson, April 27th, 1926 to February 16, 2019. Albert Hatch, April 10, 1924 to June 7, 2019. And all others dear to our hearts who have entered into everlasting rest with the Lord Jesus. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of faith in Jesus sealed by the Holy Spirit and the means of grace. And the gift of faith that our loved ones professed. As you have received our brothers and sisters who have gone to their eternal rest in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life, bring us at last with them into your glorious presence, that together with all your saints and angels we may give you glory forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we'll sing the last four verses of hymn 554. church this morning when you hear the uh, words in Lord in your mercy you may respond hear our prayer you may rise in peace let us pray to the Lord Lord in your mercy hear our prayer 
Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace, and support the persecuted with your promises, enabling them to make a good confession of faith and saving for them the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, grant that all who have heard the word and who have been baptized to daily wash their filthy rags in Jesus' blood. Pull tightly around them the righteous holy robe Jesus spun for them by his perfect life and walk in godly living and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, you have gathered us here at Saved by Grace around your word and sacrament. We ask that you grant blessing on the visitation conducted this weekend. Give Pastor Sparley the wisdom to evaluate for us all he has heard and seen in order that he may give his insights for us to preserve and promote your ministry of word and sacrament among us. And that the unity we have in the faith may be strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we beg you grant wisdom to all those whom you have placed in temporal authority. While the impeachment inquiry has now become official, we again ask that you enable those in temporal authority to do the work they have been elected to do, both in the legislative and executive offices, cause justice to be done, and forgive our nation for its many sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for residents of California, remembering especially family members and sister congregations affected by the fires and windstorms. We thank you for the firefighters and emergency responders who have come to their aid. We ask that you protect those who may still be in danger, provide for the displaced, enabling them to rebuild their lives in time, and use this disaster to turn people to you, trusting that Jesus has prepared an eternal home for them in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we bring before you in prayer all those suffering in any physical and mental anguish, especially Harry Bartels, hospitalized last night and suffering from pneumonia. If it please you, grant him healing. While we do not know the outcome, we do ask that you keep him at rest in Jesus, his Savior, knowing that he has an inheritance in heaven with all the saints. Grant strength and support artists as and support to artists as she cares for him. We also bring before you Alan Irvine, husband to Don Bartell's sister Denise, who is unable to walk at this time. We ask that you give the doctors the knowledge to determine what is hindering him to walk and to provide the care he needs. Give them and all others for whom we pray relief according to your will and strength to meet the challenges ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and final healing at the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the preface to Holy Communion, number 20 in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god who in the multitude of your saints did surround us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we rejoicing in their fellowship may run with patience the race that is set before us and together with them may receive the crown of glory that does not fade away Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
And we'll continue with the exhortation printed on the white inserts in your bulletin. Dear friends in Christ, in order that you may receive this holy sacrament worthily, it is good that you consider what you must now believe and do. From the words of Christ, this is my body, which is given for you. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. You should believe that Jesus Christ is himself present with his body and blood, as the words declare. If this is the confession of your faith, answer, I do so believe. I do so believe. From Christ's words for the remission of sins, you should believe that Jesus Christ bestows upon you his body and blood to confirm unto you the forgiveness of all your sins. If this is your belief, say amen. Amen. And finally, you should do as Christ commands you when he says, take, eat, drink of it, all of you, and this do in remembrance of me. If it is your intent to do as Christ commands, indicate so by saying, I do so intend. I do so intend. Upon your affirmative answers and declared intent, you have rightly examined yourselves and may worthily eat Christ's body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. You should also unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift, and should love one another with a pure heart, and thus with the whole Christian church have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may God the Father grant you his grace through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. the same night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same manner in the same way also he took the cup after supper gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
his true blood which was shed for you. Take and drink. This is his true blood which was shed for you. Take and drink. This is his true blood which was shed for you. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his precious blood, with which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven you.
but she has made full satisfaction for all your sins. Strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven you. His true blood, which was shed for you. Take and drink. This is His true blood, which was shed for you. And now may the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His precious blood, with which He has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are. Savior Jesus Christ, in his precious blood, with which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. his true body which was given for you take also and drink this is his true blood which was shed for you and now the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his precious blood which has made full satisfaction for all your sins strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting depart in peace for your sins indeed are forgiven you
joy in singing Simeon's song, Departure, number 28, the note to Metis, you may rise. unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through these beneficial gifts, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through them in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated for our concluding hymn 558.